Thank you, Pastor Claude. Thank you, worship team. I know you're out there somewhere. That was, yeah, awesome to worship God together. How are you guys? Good? You made it out of your homes today? That's brave. It was cold out there. I joked yesterday. I was like, everyone, the heating is, is gone, so it's going to get some really cool in here. You should have seen their faces. They were like, what? But no, the heating's working in here, so that's good. Great, let's pray. <laughs> God, thank you so much that we can get together as a church family and, and learn about you. And God, during this time, we, we just want to invite you to move. We just want to invite you to come. We just acknowledge your presence. And Holy Spirit, would you come and speak to our hearts? We know that we want to meet you this morning, God. We want to meet you. We don't just want to hear a message or sing songs. We want to meet the living God. So God, open our our eyes and our ears to what you have to say, God. We just say yes to you and what you want to do in our hearts this morning. So go well beyond what I say, Jesus, and just speak to everyone individually. You see them, you know them, you love them so deeply, and you want to speak to them today. So yes, God, uh, just Holy Spirit, have your freedom this morning to, to speak to us. Guide my words. Amen. Right on. So 2018. Is that weird to anyone? 2018? I still remember 2000, the year 2000. We were, I was in my brother's room and we were counting down to the new year. And the world was supposed to end or something like that. I didn't really understand uh, what was going on. But, but yeah, we, we counted down the time. And 2018 back then just seemed so like so far, just like Claude was saying, I thought we'd have rocket cars by now. We still don't. But they're, they're probably coming pretty soon, and I'll, I'll have to get one. But, uh, but 2018, today what I, what I want to talk about is, is just as we're kind of on the bridge of, of uh, looking back at 2017 and, and looking forward to 2018, I, I want to take a time to talk about living in the moment in 2018. I think it's really important as, as a people that we, that we would live in the moment this year. And secular culture paints a, a different picture of living in the moment. They kind of say, you know what, spend all your money, um, drink everything, just, just do it all. Because tomorrow, you have no idea if it's going to be there. The world's probably going to end. And uh, that's, well, I wouldn't say that's living in the moment. <laughs> you're going to wake up with a lot of regrets and you're going to be broken, etc., but what, what living in the moment is, I want to talk about four things this morning that I think uh, in, in my life that I want to do and in our lives that, that if we do it, I think we're going to be people that live in the moment effectively. And um, yeah, so four things that we need to do to live in the moment. Um, this, this past summer, I took a, a road trip uh, with my wife Valerie and we went to uh, New York and visited Halifax, PEI, uh, and then went through Ontario to visit her family. And uh, it was a lot of driving. It was a lot. And I'd been on road trips before, so I, I kind of knew what to expect. But nothing prepared me for the amount of pictures that we took on this road trip. I, I'd taken some road trips before with my friends. And uh, they weren't, you know, they were picture people. So the only pictures we took is when someone fell asleep in the car. You have the mandatory, you have to take a pic to, you know, blackmail them, to threaten to post it on social media or something like that. And then you have your one group picture, just one group, you're allowed one group picture. And, and if someone's like not ready and they're like, you just take it and that's it. You don't take it again. You don't look, oh, no, I didn't look good, so we got to take it again. You have one group picture. And so on this road trip, we took a lot of pictures. And uh, I wasn't really great at taking pictures. I just, as long as you're on the picture, that's, that's, that's all that counts, right? But there's more to it. There's angles and stuff like that. But I got good at taking pictures. So if you need your picture taken after the service, call me. I'm pretty good. Maybe I'm losing practice now, but I, I'm not bad. But I kept saying to Valerie, Valerie, we need to, we need to live in the moment. Like, pictures are nice, but I want to enjoy this, and, and, and I want to live in the moment here. And uh, I, I can say this now because Valerie's not here. But uh, <laughs> the other day I was looking through my phone, and I was just looking at all the pictures of our road trip, and it was nice. I, she's not here, so she will, she'll say, I told you so. But it was amazing to look back and just to see the memories, to see the different locations. And all of a sudden, as I did this and I looked through the pictures of our road trip, 
I was like, wow, yeah, I was reliving all the experiences that I had. And some things I would have forgotten, some moments I would have forgotten were there because they were, they were captured on photo. So again, I, I want to be careful. If, if word gets out, then we're going to take a lot of pictures. But I get it. I get why you take pictures now. I think an important part of living in the moment is recalling the past. And it's not something we always do. Sometimes we just kind of float through life and we don't reflect on the past or, or God's faithfulness or where we're going or where God has brought us from. Um, the Israelites did this. When they were brought through the Red Sea, God did a miraculous thing and they, they sing praises to God in the moment. But soon they're in the wilderness and, and they kind of forget their, their, why they're there. And they, they slowly forget the works of God. And you see in the next chapters that, that they're starting to complain. And, and in, in, in Psalms 106, David kind of paints this picture. And he says, Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your wondrous works. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love. But they rebelled by the sea and at the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake that he might make known his mighty power. He rebuked the Red Sea and it became dry and he led them through the deep as though a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe and redeemed them from the power of the enemy. And the waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and they sang his praise, but soon they forgot his works. And I really think that God has been so faithful in our lives, but sometimes it's really hard to see that if we don't recall his works, if we don't remember his works. And I love that the next time that the Israelites went through the Jordan River, God, God did a very similar thing and they were able to cross it. And what did God get them to do? They took a picture. Not really. But they built, they, they built a, a, a memorial. They said, get 12 stones, build a memorial. That way, when your kids, when your kids ask, what, what's this doing here? Why, why is this, this structure here? You can say, hey, this is where God led us through. This is where God did a good work. This is where God saved us. And I really think in our lives we need to do the same. We, if we want to live in the moment in, in 2018, there's going to be times where it's going to be hard. There's going to be times where we're, we're going to doubt the faithfulness of God potentially. But when we recall the past and we see, wow, God brought me through that situation. God brought me through that situation. He was there for me there. He was faithful there. Then we're going to get confidence and trust that God's going to be the same today. That he's got me today. That he didn't bring me from Egypt just to be here for no reason. Maybe you're in the middle of a good work that he's doing or in a hard situation, but God's going to bring you through and do something good out of it. Amen? So we have to find time, and we have to find ways to take time to recall the past. One thing that I really don't like is journaling. It's just hard. Um, but it's something that I need to do. It's something that I believe that is just so important for me. And I, when I journal, I don't, you know, say, Dear diary, today I ate some Fruit Loops, and they were great. You know, I don't just write down my, my whole life. I don't take time just to write down point, 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 point. But what is God teaching me right now? What's he speaking to me about? What's he doing in my life? And, and what are the prayer requests that, that I have? These are, what are my prayers to God? These are some of the things that, that I journal. Because if I, if I don't do this, I, I start just to float through life. I start maybe just to forget um, what he's done in the past or not realize what he's doing right now. And so this week, what I'm actually going to do is just going to look through my journal and just say, hey God, what did you do this last year? And all of a sudden, I bet as I do that, it's just going to be, whoa, whoa, whoa. And all these things that he said in the, in the moment or in the past, I believe they're going to line up and give me trust and faith in my present to move forward and purpose in the moment. And that's what the Israelites forgot. That's what they missed out on. They, God did a miraculous thing. He brought them. But there was a wilderness period. There was a trying time. But that's when they forgot the faithfulness of God. And they, they really suffered uh, because of that. So part of to, living in the moment in 2018 is recalling the past and remembering the past. So your homework this week. You didn't know you are getting homework, but you are. Your homework this week is just... just Reflect on 2017. Go home and write down what God did in your life. Write down how you grew in 2017. I bet you guys grew. 
If you were faithful to God this year, I bet there's places in your life that you've grown. But often what happens, again, we, growth is so gradual, right? Sometimes we don't realize it happening. But when we look back, all of a sudden we'll see, oh, I used to think like this and now I think like this. I used to maybe struggle with this and now, now things are getting better. And again, if we just float through life and, and don't recall the past, then, then we're going to miss out on maybe what God has done or the growth that he's brought us through. Uh, maybe you look back 2017 you realize that you haven't grown. Well, then that's a good barometer to say, okay, 2018, I'm, I'm going to do things differently. I'm going I'm to rearrange some stuff in my life because I'm not growing in this area or I'm, I'm struggling more in this area. But I think it's a really important thing to live in the moment, if we're going to do that effectively, to, to recall the past. So yeah, I invite you to go home uh, this week and just reflect on what God has done in 2017 and reflect on how you've grown. Can you do that? Great. Hand my, your assignments in to brenton at gmchurch.ca. No, you don't have to do that. There'll be a due date. No. <laughs> the next thing that we need to do to live in the moment it is to deal with the past. And this is not an easy one at all. This is, this is a hard one to do. Um, three weeks ago, I, uh, I called the dentist for the first time in about four years. I'm waiting for applause. Thank you. Thank you. It was hard. It was one of the hardest things I've done in my life because you don't know what's going on under the hood. You just, you're just like, okay, and you just want to put it off. Maybe I can just wait until I get dentures or something like that. But it, it's something that it's so hard to, to deal with. Um, I, I hurt my shoulder six months ago as well. And, and it's funny the mindsets that we have. It's just like, you know what? I, I can still, like, if I leave it limp all day, it's not that bad. You know, it's pretty good. And you convince yourself that it's just going to get better. And this is what I've kind of done. And I just left it for a while. And the other day I went to the gym. And it's like, yes, my shoulder's finally ready for shoulder workouts. So I do it like one day of shoulder workouts. The next day it's just sore. I'm like, okay, I need to address it. And this is kind of what we do in our lives sometimes. The things in the past, we just, we just don't want to go there. We think, you know, it's, it's just going to work itself out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fix itself. But, but if we don't address things in our past, if we don't deal with our past head on, then, then it's going to hurt us a lot more. And, it, and it's hard because maybe you're ashamed of it or maybe it's scary to deal with. Maybe you just don't want to. But it's going to hurt more if we don't address the past. Amen? In Matthew 5, 20, 23 to 25, it says, So if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before you go to the altar, and first be reconciled with your brother, then come and offer your gift. I love that. I think God wants us to deal with our past, because he wants us to be at peace with our past, because if we're not, then it robs the moment. It robs the moment with God. And we can be doing our life hurt and limping and just convincing ourselves that we're okay. But if we don't deal with the past, it, it will rob the moment in 2018. And, and we, just, we just can't function like that. And it's, it, it might be scary to address, but it's so worth doing. When Nathan uh, rebuked David for, for committing uh, adultery with Bathsheba and, and the murder of Uriah, uh, David's firstborn had already been born. So it would have been about, uh, people say, about a year, a year ago that David committed adultery and, and murdered Uriah. Imagine that year for David. Imagine that year. Do you think that was a year in David's life where he lived in the moment? Or do you think he was just haunted by his past? Do you think he was just like, oh, what have I done? No, it's going to be okay. I'm just going to keep going on forward. I'm, I'm the king. I have my kingly duties to do, and I'm, I'm just going to keep on going. I'm sorry, God. He must have been sorry, he must have been broken inside, but because he didn't deal with it, he still had so much that he was carrying, and I don't think he lived in the moment. And after this confrontation, this is where you see Psalms 51, where David really repents. He gets it all out, and he says, God, cleanse me with, with hyssop, and, and make me pure, and give me a pure and clean heart, God. And he starts to deal with, with his past. And even later in, in the chapter, um, in 2 Samuel 12, when, when they're in a time of, of just mourning, and he's still in this time of, of dealing with all this stuff, this is when Solomon is born. And he's starting to move on. 
And I can guarantee that, that it wasn't fixed like that. It was something that David had to keep dealing with, and he had to keep, uh, there was a healing process. But, but if we want to live in the moment in 2018, we have to deal with our past, and we have to do it head on. Um, just to be vulnerable with you guys, um, today I, I struggled with, with porn in my past, and it's something that that, you know, I was, I was so broken over, and I was so ashamed, and, and I would ask God for forgiveness, and it was something where I'm like, I'm so sorry, God, I don't want to be like this, but, but I, never, I never just got proper help. I never got uh, accountability. I never opened up to the right people, and that's why I'm so grateful we have, you know, a Conquer series going on where that happens. I would have loved that when I was in high school or, or wherever in my past, but, but it was, again, something that, that I had to deal with head on. And because shame was holding me back, I had a lot of moments robbed in my life because of that. And, and when, I, when I chose to deal with it head on, there was a process of healing and there was a process of, of being free and being accountable with people. But, and, and when I still look back, it, it kind of hurts and there's a scar there. But, but I'm able to say, wow, God, look what you did. Look where I was Look where you brought me to, God. Thank you, Jesus, for making me free. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me out of that place. And, and it was one of the best decisions in my life to, to deal with that and to see that through. So I, I just really encourage you guys. God, God wants you to be at peace with your past. He wants to forgive you. And, and part of forgiveness is confessing your sin to God. But, but part of it is also just opening up and bringing things to the light. Because what's in the darkness, the enemy has, has power over often because we're, we're ashamed on the inside. So, so if your past is haunting you, deal with it. God wants to give you peace in your past so that you can live in the moment. Don't let your past rob your moment in 2018, okay? There'll be a time of healing. There'll be a process of healing. But, but man, when, when you see that through, one day you'll be able to look back and you'll say, Thank you, God, for what you brought me out of. And he'll use that testimony to bring other people to freedom. So I challenge you guys, don't let your past steal your moment. Deal with it. Open up. Get accountability. Get help. And don't keep things in the dark. It's so worth it. Amen? It's a hard thing to do, but man, is it so important. And God wants you to be at peace with your past. To live in the moment, we need to trust God with our futures. Again, this is another hard one. Uh, and, and again, planning is a great thing to do. Planning for our future. Dreaming of our future is a great thing to do. Saying, oh, in my future, I want to be here. I, I want to be here. I want, I want it to be like that. Um, and feeling uncertain about our future is expected as well. It's, it's, it's kind of hard because we, we've seen the past and the story that God is, is writing, but we don't see the, the end chapter. This is why um, Valerie, when she's watching a TV show, she watches the last episode. She just wants to know what happens. And I'm like, why do you do that? The journey, you have to watch it all. But this is what she does. She reads a book, reads the last page, and then she starts from the beginning. <laughs> Sometimes. And it's uncertain in our life. It's hard to live with that uncertainty. But God doesn't want the worry for the future to rob our moment now. And I used to be so worried for my future about what I would do and where I would go. And one day I remember reading Matthew 6, where Jesus talks about don't worry. Don't worry about what you'll eat, what you'll drink. You know, I take care of the birds of the air. I take care of the grasses. I'm going to take care of you more. And I love that. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to believe that. In Matthew 6.31 it says, don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So don't let tomorrow's worries rob today's moment. God doesn't want you to live like that. He's going to take care of us when we seek his will, when we put his kingdom first in our life, and when we acknowledge him and we seek him and we're focused on him. This is when he's going to bring us peace because he's got it. He's got our future. 
He sees the end chapters and he's going to take care of us. When we recall the past too, we'll be able to see his faithfulness and then trust him with our future as well. I love Proverbs 3 verse 6. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. Isn't that an amazing promise? In all your ways acknowledge God. Seek God's will for your life and he'll make your path straight. That's his part of the bargain. That's his promise to make your path straight. And when I, when I look in, in the past in my life, whenever I was, I was needing um, a, a direction in my life, I would always pray and I would always seek God. And sometimes it didn't feel like, you know, sometimes I just wanted God saying, you know, go here, go to this school, or marry Valerie. Okay, I will, God. It wasn't always that big, booming voice. But when I look back and I recall my past, I always see him making my past straight when I acknowledged him. When I, when I sought his will in community, heard God in, in my own life and in, in community, I always see God lining me up to be in his will. Because God doesn't want you to miss it. I don't think God wants you to miss it. He's not up there hoping that you'll miss your destiny. And in my life, whenever I get worried or uncertain about my future, I always just ask, God, are you worried about my future? Are you worried, God? I just realize he's not. He's not worried. He's excited. And he's wanting to lead me and he's wanting to guide me and he's just wanting me to take his hand, to acknowledge him and he's, he's going to write the story. He's going to make my path straight as long as I get my part right. But sometimes in my life, again, I wanted to make my own path straight but that's his promise. My job is to acknowledge him in everything I do and just to say, God, help me to follow your will. God, lead me, guide me. God, show me the way you want to take. And, and that's when he'll be faithful in making my path straight. And when we live like that, it won't rob our moments. The, the, the fear of the unknown or the fear of the future, it's not going to rob uh, our, our, our moment just to trust God today and to let that story, um, yeah, kind of write itself as we follow God. You ready for the last point? Great. Last point, someone said, sure. It's good. <laughs> the last point is to, to live in the moment. We need to know that today is your moment. Can you say that to your neighbor? Today is your moment. 2018 is your year. Say that. You got to say it with more punch than that. One more time. One more time. A little louder. There we go. Often what, what happens in our life, I think we get into looking at the other side of the fence, right? Where the grass is greener. When I'm there, that's going to be my moment. When I get married, that's going to be my moment. When I get that job over there, that will be my moment. When I'm out of this situation and into that situation, that's my moment out there. And we get so caught up in, in arriving places or, or accomplishing things that, that sometimes we don't realize the significance of this moment. And, and if we, we do that in our lives, we'll, we'll stumble here because maybe we're, maybe we're just at a hard place in our life. Maybe we feel like we're just at an insignificant place in our life, but we need to know that this is our moment right here. What God is doing now in this chapter of your life is so important for you to get there. You need to be walking here. I love the, the story of Nehemiah. It's such an amazing story. He, he, was a, you know, he was a Hebrew, and what happened was you know, Babylon um, brought them into captivity, and now he was working for uh, the, the Persian government. And some of, some of the Jews had gone back to Jerusalem, but Nehemiah was one that was still working uh, in the government of Persia as a, a cupbearer. To the, to the king. And so his brother visited him. His brother was one that went back to Jerusalem. And he visits Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, just kind of concerned about Jerusalem, asks, hey, brother, you know, how is Jerusalem doing? And his brother says, well, it's not good. The walls are burnt down. The gates are destroyed. The people are, are in distress. It's, it's pretty bleak. And Nehemiah he cares about his hometown, and so this breaks his heart. And he, he prays, and he, he fasts, and he starts just weeping before God. But still, he's in this situation in, in Persia. And, and I bet it would have been hard for Nehemiah, right? He was, he was here, and his, his moment maybe was out there, but he was still here serving the king. And the story picks up six months later. 
Six months later, Nehemiah does the same thing. He serves the king, and, and this, is, this is how it goes. Early the following spring in the month of Nisan, during the 20th year of King Xerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I never before appeared sad in the king's presence. So it's easy to slip that by, but Nehemiah for six months is serving the king. He's praying, he's fasting, inward lay, he's, he, he's broken because he has a dream of, of rebuilding the wall. And he wants to be there, and, and he, he wants to be out there. But, but at some point, Nehemiah said, no, I'm going to show up here today. No, I'm, I'm still going to serve the king, I'm going to pray, I'm going to fast, and I'm going to serve the king with all I got. This must have been terribly hard, but this is what he did for six months. He hadn't appeared sad in the king's presence. And so the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. Then I was terrified, but I remembered long, but I replied, long live the king. How can I not be sad for the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire? The king asked, well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, if it please the king and if it and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. The king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked, How long will you be gone, and when will you return? After I told him how long I would be gone, the king agreed to my request. And not only that, the king actually helped fund the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem and gave you know, timber to Nehemiah's mission. But I bet that six months for Nehemiah would have been hard to live in the moment. I bet he would have said, God, why am, why am I here? God, why, why am I here when, when, my, when my city is out there and it's in, dis- in distress? And he had a dream uh, uh, of being out there helping, but at the same time, Nehemiah made a decision saying, no, I'm going to show up today. I'm going to be faithful here today. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep fasting. I'm going to keep serving as best as I can. And I know when I'm doing this, God's, I'm going to trust God with the result. And God made straight the paths. God did something uh, amazing in in Nehemiah's life. And I think sometimes in our life it's the same thing. We want to be out there and we want, we're, we're dreaming of that moment and that's good. It's good to have dreams of that. But it's really important that if we want to know that we're going to get out there to fulfill our calling, to wherever that is, we need to walk faithfully today. And when I look back in my life, there were so many moments that seemed insignificant at the time. There's so many seasons in my life that's like, God, why did I have to go through that first? Why didn't you just bring me right here? And in the time, moments don't feel significant, do they? But God's writing your story. And this moment, 2018, is important. And when you're faithful and when you show up like Nehemiah did, he, he's going to bring you through things. He, he's, he's, he's writing it. He sees the end. And you don't see the end, but he does. And he's writing my story. When I recall the past, I can get a glimpse into what he's writing. But but at the same time, I need to know that right now is my moment. Right now is a significant part in my life. 2018 is a significant part of my life. Amen? I love what Paul said. He said, I I don't want to run aimlessly. And this is what I think sometimes I find myself doing in life. He says, I don't want to box like I'm beating the air. I want to be focused. I want to be calculated. I want to know that this is my moment. Amen, church? Awesome. Worship team, can you come up? So to live in the moment, we've got to do four things. The first one is recall our past. God has been so faithful to to us. And when we recall the past and we look back in in what what he's done in our life, it's going to give us new hope, a new purpose, and a new trust and confidence in in what he's doing now. So first of all, take some time this week to recall the past. Second of all, we need to deal with the past, to address it. And if there's things in your life that you've kept in the dark, there's no better decision than to bring that in the light and address it. Because God's not a God of condemnation. He's not a God who, who, who wants to, to punish you for what you've done. He's a God that wants to bring you to freedom. And there'll be a healing process that you'll go through, and there'll be some pain in that. It will be hard. I know when I'm getting my shoulder fixed, and it's going to be massaged out, it's not going to feel good. It's, it's going to hurt. 
But that pain is way better because it's a pain that's going to bring me to freedom. And God's going to bring you to freedom when you deal with your past. So deal with your past. The third thing we need to do is trust God with our future. Acknowledge him in all your ways and say, God, I know you're writing my story. And when I'm faithful and showing up today, living in the moment now, you're going to be faithful in bringing me to the end of my destiny. You're going to be faithful in making the last chapter a good one. Yeah, let's just pray. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives right now. And Jesus, I just pray that, that as a people this year, that we'd hit, uh, that 2018, we'd hit the ground running, God. And God, you, your promise is that you gave us life and life to the full. And I believe that you want us to live in the moment and enjoy the moment. You don't want the moment to be stealed by our past mistakes. You don't want our moment to be stolen by worrying about where we're headed or worrying about our future. You want to take care of us. And God, I just pray that we trust you in that and that we'd live in the moment for you. Just with every eye closed this morning, Maybe you've turned away from God. Maybe it's been this past year you've had a, a falling away. Or maybe you've never even given your life to Jesus. I believe that today can be a moment with you and God. 2018 can be a moment where you see in your life where, where there was a turn in your story. There was a rearranging that something changed in your life. If there's anyone here today that, that you just want to say, God, I, I'm sorry for for turning away from you. I'm sorry for what I've done or I, I want to accept you for the first time in my life. I want to be a part of the story that you're writing through my life, God. If that's you today, just raise your hand. Just as a symbol that you're saying yes to that. Yes to coming back to God. Thank you, yeah. Anyone else? And secondly, if there's some of you out there and, and you know that you need to address the past, if the past is, is haunting you and, and you're not at peace with your past right now because you know inside you haven't, you haven't really dealt with it. Maybe you've, you feel sorry. Maybe you've asked for forgiveness, but you've never brought it into the light. You've never told anyone. It's, it's that secret that's haunting you. It's that secret that's ruining your moment right now. I just want you to know that when you bring that to the light, God is going to meet you with his grace. God is not going to shame you. God is going to love you and give you grace to get out of that and to be free from your past. And if today as a symbol, you just want to say, I want to start that process of dealing with my past. And don't take this lightly because there's going to be follow-up in this. But if that's you today and you want to say, today, I want 2018 to be my moment, not stolen by my past. And I want to deal with what I haven't dealt with yet. If that's you, just raise your hand as a symbol saying, yes, I want to do that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So many hands. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, God, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you that you want to be, you want us to be at peace with our past, Jesus. You don't want our past mistakes to rob our moments now. Jesus, I just pray that, that as these people have risen their hand, that you'd give them courage and boldness to do what they just committed to God, to deal with their past, so that one day they will, they'll be able to look back and say, wow, God, look where you brought me from, and look where you brought me to. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. And God, I, I just pray that all of us today would make a, make a decision in our, our hearts to hit the ground running in 2018. To say that right now, this is my moment here. I'm going to be faithful with the story that you're writing through my life right now, God. Maybe some of, some of us have, have lost faith and, and maybe our, our, our steps are growing weary. But God wants you to live in the moment in 2018. And God, I pray that we'd hit the ground running. 
just as a sign that, that you want to say, a declaration that you want to say, hey, 2018, I want to live in the moment. If that's you, just raise your hand saying, yeah, maybe, maybe I have lost my way, but I want to live in the moment in 2018. Awesome. Yes, God. God, I pray that we'd run and not grow weary. We'd walk and not grow faint. That's your will for us this year, God. I thank you for the plans that you have for us here. And God, forgive us when we lose sight, when maybe we do run aimlessly, maybe we do box like we're beating the air, we lose our, our focus and our purpose. But God, I pray that we'd be a people who would recall your faithfulness in the past and we'd trust you with our futures and we'd show up today, Jesus. And when we do that, there's a beautiful thing that's happening. You're writing our story, and it's going to be a good one. And we trust you with that. Yeah, amen. Yeah, why don't we stand up? My chains fell off, my heart was free. I'm alive to live for you. I'm alive to live for you Amazing love, how can it be? You gave everything for me You gave everything for me Everything Nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna 